Hey, thanks for watching CNN 10. Our daily 10 minute shows are on pause for the summer, but we will be posting clips like this Monday through Friday until our regular programming resumes in August. So please enjoy, and to get notified of our content, please like and subscribe to this channel and keep up with us at CNN10.com. Every morning, scientist Jon Orsch gets up and checks his emails. And every morning, he receives an email from several female polar bears that he's tracking. I think it's always a nice way to start uh, the day, to look at what the bear have done. Orsch is part of a team from the Norwegian Polar Institute who study polar bears in Svalbard, high up in the Arctic Circle. Historically, each winter, this island chain is almost surrounded by sea ice, the traditional hunting environment for polar bears. It is not very hard to find polar bears when you have a helicopter. It's about 300 bears living in Svalbard year-round. And if you fly one hour, most of the time you find one bear. The warming climate has been melting vast amounts of sea ice in the region, but also preventing it from forming in the places it once did. So things have changed very, very fast. You often see when we fly and all that glaciers are not where they used to be. They moved hundreds of meters or even kilometers. To see how the polar bears are coping with these dramatic environmental shifts, the scientists track them down, sedate and capture the bears so that they can take samples and tag them with a GPS collar. We maybe capture 70 bears every year and I've done it for almost 20 years. We prioritize data from females because they're the ones that reproduce, that get cubs. We measure the body weight and the way we do that is physically lift the bear. You take a blood sample, you take some hairs, you can tell about pollutants that the bears have been exposed to. You can tell something about the health, you can tell something about what it's eaten. The colors take positions so we can see where the bears move all the time but they also record the temperature because it tells whether or not they, for example, are inside a den in winter. Polar bears don't hibernate, they hunt all year round and only go into a den to give birth. But retreating sea ice has impacted this too. Important areas that they used to go to give birth to cubs are more or less lost because we don't have sea ice around those islands anymore. It's also affected the bear's diet. We have several different species of seals that are depending on the sea ice and that is the main prey for the polar bears. Conditions change and they will use more time on land, they will take more birds and eggs and so on. The bears swim a lot more than they used to, maybe 100 kilometers, maybe 200 kilometers. Polar bears are opportunistic animals. It seems that they are quite resistant and they're doing quite well, despite the fact that they've lost a lot of their habitat. But there will always be a threshold. You don't find polar bears anywhere in the Arctic where you don't have sea ice, at least seasonally. Arctic summer ice, on average, has been shrinking by more than 13% each decade. Things change so significant and so fast, and we will reach some stage in the future where it will get much harder to be a polar bear in, in Svalbard. A recent study predicts that if greenhouse gas emissions stay on their current trajectory, by the end of the century, only a few polar bears will be left in the Arctic. And with it, the emails Jon Orsch receives each morning could soon stop. Tell us what you're doing to preserve the health of the planet for future generations. Send us your messages on social media using the hashtag call to earth. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter at CNN10.com and we'll see you in August for daily episodes of CNN 10. I'm Carl Azus.